consider that my head. Just call me. Well, people are interested in you, in you. You're a big star. They are, and I'm, they're interested in a lot of things. A lot of things that don't matter or shouldn't. First thing I saw, you know, was her beauty and how beautiful she was. And then I listened to her music and I loved her music. She's incredibly talented. I think she's what every female artist should strive to be or strive to be. So Rihanna is stirring up some major buzz again, ready to steal those headlines. Word on the street is she's got a bombshell to drop. Remember a few years back when everyone was gossiping about Jay-Z supposedly having a side chick named Kathy White while he was married to Bay? Yeah, well, here's where it gets juicy. Apparently news came out that Kathy had kicked the bucket. Crazy, right? That sent the rumor mill into overdrive with all sorts of theories flying around. And now, it looks like Rihanna's jumped into the mix too, ready to spill some tea on the whole situation. You just can't make this stuff up. People are interested in you, in you. you're a big star. They are, and I'm, they're interested in a lot of things. A lot of things that don't matter or shouldn't. Before getting to the details first, let's talk about why Riri felt it necessary to talk about such a sensitive topic. Rihanna and Jay-Z have always been at the center of gossip and rumors. People have been whispering for ages about whether there was something romantic going on between them. And now, it appears Rihanna's dropping hints that there might be more to the story than we thought. She's saying there were some incidents involving Jay-Z that nobody knew about before. And it's uncomfortable, and we had a lot of conversations. When you've got a billion dollars on an elevator, drama's bound to follow. Jay-Z and Beyonce, the ultimate power couple in hip-hop, got caught up in a whirlwind of cheating rumors when a security tape leaked. It supposedly showed Beyonce's sister, Solange, giving Jay-Z a piece of her mind in an elevator after the 2014 Met Gala, purse swinging and all. But that elevator showdown wasn't where the rumors began, it just added fuel to the fire. This is how Wendy Williams describes. She is kicking his behind. And the security guard's trying to hold her back. Beyonce's next to Jay-Z in the corner. And um, I know you've seen this footage before. Before their low-key wedding in 2008, Jay-Z and Beyonce reportedly dealt with persistent rumors of cheating, leading them to quietly split at times. Talk of Jay-Z's alleged wandering eye has been buzzing among the Bayhive for years. Things reached a fever pitch when Beyonce dropped her album Lemonade in 2016, packed with hints about infidelity. Fans went on a wild hunt to uncover the identity of the mysterious Becky with the good hair, supposedly Jay-Z's mistress. Later on, Jay-Z spilled the beans himself in his album 444, confirming the accusations. While Becky's identity remains a mystery, these revelations shed light on the rocky road the Carters navigated through in the face of cheating rumors. Love you, you'll never be enough. Let's just keep it real, Jay-Z. Jay-Z. Jay-Z and Beyonce had a stretch of smooth sailing in their relationship before it hit stormy waters with cheating rumors. Back in 2001, Jay mentioned to Vanity Fair that they were still in the early stages of dating. But fast forward four years, and the media was buzzing with rumors of Jay-Z supposedly getting cozy with his protege Rihanna. Suddenly, their picture-perfect romance was overshadowed. According to Jay Randy Tarabarelli, who penned an unauthorized biography of Beyonce, the couple quietly split during this turbulent time. Beyonce Beyonce was left grappling with doubts fueled by all the talk about Rihanna. Tough times for the power couple, no doubt. Well, you know, that had been a long-standing rumor that uh, Jay-Z and Rihanna were having an affair. And my job as a biographer is, is to sort of unpack these rumors and and put the lie to them if possible or confirm them if that's the case. The rumors surrounding Beyonce's breakup anthem, Ring the Alarm, in 2006 fueled speculation within the Bayhive that the song was aimed at Rihanna, with Jay-Z being the supposed dog mentioned in the lyrics. However, Beyonce's team reportedly denied any such connections. But were these rumors based on truth? According to Tara Borelli, Jay-Z didn't actually cheat on Beyonce. He claimed that the rumors were fabricated by Rihanna's publicist, Jonathan Hay, as a strategy to boost her career. In a 2015 email to the New York Daily News, Hay allegedly admitted to concocting the scheme, apologized to Jay-Z and Rihanna, and described the whole situation as very awkward. So Jay-Z and Rihanna never did the thing. They did not do the Wendy. Talking about the relationship, Rihanna's connection with Jay-Z traces back to 2004 when she was called to the Def Jam Recordings offices, where Jay-Z was the big boss as president at the time. The young singer from Barbados openly admitted feeling jittery about meeting the influential mogul. She shared in a 2007 interview with The Guardian how she was overwhelmed with nerves as she came face to face with the man who would change her life. She humorously described the moment, saying, I was like, oh God, he's right there. 
here, I can't look, I can't look, I can't look. Their bond has stood the test of time and rumors. When Rihanna was announced as the headliner for the 2023 Super Bowl halftime show alongside the NFL, Jay-Z was quick to offer his congratulations to his protege and friend. Despite facing challenges and rumors, including talks of an affair back in 2005, it's clear that both Rihanna and Jay-Z deeply care for each other and fully support each other's careers. Beautiful When girl. I met her that day, I knew she was a star. Like, just her look, the way she walked into a room and her confidence, and she performed in my office. It's hard to fathom a world where Rihanna's immense talent isn't recognized by everyone, but apparently that was the case when she auditioned for Jay-Z, who was calling the shots at Def Jam Records back then. Rihanna's journey to the top kicked off when she caught the attention of record producer Evan Rogers shortly after winning a local beauty pageant in Barbados. After relocating to the U.S. to stay with Rogers and his wife, she recorded her debut single, Ponda Replay. When Rihanna belted out the tune for Jay-Z at Def Jam, it was a game changer. As she recounted to Rolling Stone, her performance solidified her star status in Jay-Z's eyes. Interestingly, it wasn't until Jay-Z caught Rihanna's live performance of the song that he was truly won over. According to New York DJ Cypher Sounds, there was a bit of a back and forth between him and Jay-Z about signing Rihanna, with Jay-Z having some reservations. Sounds remembered the discussion saying, he was like, I don't know, it might be just one song. I'm like, no, I'm telling you, Jay, this is why you have me around. My ear is your ear. I'm the NR. The relationship between Rihanna and Jay-Z has always been shrouded in mystery, with persistent rumors swirling about a possible affair when they first collaborated back in 2005. These rumors allegedly played a significant role in Beyonce and Jay-Z's reported one-year split, as Beyonce grappled with the onslaught of stories. According to author J. Randy Tarabarelli, as reported by the Daily Mail, Beyonce didn't know how to handle this, and it actually led to a temporary breakup. They spent about a year apart because Beyonce was uncertain about the situation with Rihanna. However, it was later revealed that these rumors were completely fabricated. Publicist Jonathan Hay admitted to planting the stories in the media as part of his efforts to promote Rihanna's debut single, Ponda Replay. A publicist who worked for Rihanna who admitted that he planted the story in the press, it was not true. It was a story that he planted in order to further Rihanna's career. Okay. Despite the success that followed her audition and securing a record deal with Jay-Z, Rihanna still experienced nerves during that pivotal moment. As a teenager from Barbados meeting one of the most influential figures in the music industry, it's completely understandable. Rihanna later reminisced about the nerve-wracking experience via her Instagram story, admitting, Feels like just yesterday I was shaking in the hallways of Def Jam waiting to audition for Jay, as reported by the Evening Standard. In a similar account shared with The Guardian in 2007, Rihanna described the intense anxiety she felt during her audition for Jay-Z. She remembered being incredibly quiet, shy, and feeling a chill throughout the process. She expressed the surreal feeling of sitting across from the iconic Jay-Z. I remember being extremely quiet. I was very shy. I was cold the entire time. I had butterflies. I'm sitting across from Jay-Z. Like Jay-Z, I was starstruck. Their friendship goes beyond the music industry, extending to various aspects of life. Jay-Z, a rap legend and mogul, has openly talked about offering advice to Rihanna on a wide range of topics. He emphasizes that while he provides guidance, ultimately, Rihanna makes her own decisions based on that advice. And when she walked into our office, I was like, you know, she just had, it was just something about her. It was just, she had this, you know, it was just something about it. And then she um, performed the song and I was like, okay. In a 2013 interview with Hot 97's Angie Martinez, Jay-Z addressed whether he intervenes if he feels Rihanna is making questionable choices. He asserted, that's not my place. No, again, I can't control the outcome of her life. I can't intervene. I can give advice when asked and that's it. I can provide information and then life has to play out. Life has to happen. Rihanna, in turn, has shared insights into the advice she has received from Jay-Z over the years. During an interview on On The Record with Fuse, she revealed that Jay-Z once told her, you must be a really great person because great things keep happening for you. Don't ever change who you are. Always remain humble, the same. But was he really humble throughout his career? Evidence he wasn't that much, which even may have made him involved in a M. It's surprising that there's hardly any information about Jay-Z's alleged mistress, Kathy White, who reportedly died under mysterious circumstances in 2011. However, journalist Liz Crowen just set off a social media firestorm by 
claiming she had a conversation with Kathy before her death. Liz is now dropping hints that Jay-Z's time might be up. Adding fuel to the fire, old blog posts resurfaced with eyewitness accounts claiming they saw Kathy with Jay-Z and Diddy. With all these allegations swirling around Diddy, fans are speculating that Jay-Z could be the next target. You want to know what makes Diddy be in publicly shamed like this so, so left? Sean Carter is worse. But what's the story about Kathy White? How did she die and what does Liz Corkin know about Jay-Z? Let's break it down. She contacted her allegedly, and we will get into that. When the announcement was made by this publication that was going to out this situation. All right, so back in early September 2011, there was some buzz in the local news and celeb blogs about this young woman named Kathy Coriana White. Some outlets even went as far as calling her Jay-Z's supposed mistress. But guess what? The big media outlets were too busy fawning over Beyonce's surprise pregnancy announcement, so Kathy's death kind of flew under the radar for most people. Sneaky, right? The night's biggest moment, of course, was Beyonce's pregnancy revelation. First, with some of the press outside the theater before for the show. But hey, if you're up for some detective work, you can still dig up some of those original articles. Like this one we found on Hot 107 titled Jay-Z's Alleged Mistress Dies at 28. It's like a piece of internet history hiding in the depth. Kathy White was first found out to be allegedly having an affair with Jay-Z when she was spotted at Club Tao in Las Vegas with Claudia Jordan and Diddy. According to the article, Kathy Coriana White, who was known as a fitness and beauty expert, was discovered dead in her Manhattan apartment on September second. She had graduated from Howard University and had contributed to various online publications. Plus, she was the big boss as the CEO of her own public relations firm called White Label PR. And this is trending on ET Now. The amateur rapper has been the center of many tabloids, claiming she is to blame for JMB's rumor falling out. Now, the report said the cause of her death was an aneurysm. That's pretty tragic, especially for someone so young and successful. However, seemingly Kathy had some drama with the blogs the year before her passing. Hollywood Street King, one of the OG celeb gossip bloggers, spilled the tea claiming that she was Jay-Z's side piece. Now, here's where it gets juicy. Rumors started swirling after Kathy and model Claudia Jordan were supposedly seen at a Las Vegas nightclub, chilling at a table with Jay-Z and Diddy or Puff Daddy or whatever he's calling himself these days. Seems like Kathy had her fair share of gossip swirling around her, which can't be easy to deal with. But that's the price of fame sometimes, right? But if you're feeling like doing some sleuthing and you hit up Hollywood Street King's website, you'll stumble upon three separate blog posts from 2010, all about Jay-Z's alleged affair with Kathy White. The first two posts dropped on August 31st, 2010. One of them was straight up titled Jay-Z caught cheating on Beyonce with Kathy White. Woo, talk about throwing shade. And then there's the other one called Jay-Z photographed with mistress Kathy White at Tao. Sounds like Hollywood Street Kings was all over this story back in the day. In that first blog post, there's a photo of Kathy posing with two of her girlfriends, and the blog claims that Jay-Z had been involved with Kathy even before he tied the knot with Beyonce in April 2008. Whoa, that's some serious gossip. And get this, the article goes on to say that Kathy is tight with none other than Claude Claudia Jordan, who's been rumored to be a homewrecker. Apparently, Claudia was linked to actor Michael Jai White while he was still married to his wife, Courtney Chapman. Talk about messy drama. According to Hollywood Street King, they got wind of Jay-Z and Kathy's alleged affair from insiders close to Kathy's good friend Jason Lee. Jason Lee's name popping up again? Now this is getting juicy. If you remember, just last year, before Beyonce's Renaissance movie premiere, Jason Lee was stirring up some serious drama. He claimed he had some major tea to spill on Queen Bay and even went as far as trying to blackmail her. Can you believe it? He basically said he'd spill all the secrets unless Beyonce got Kelly Rowland to sit down for an interview with him. So that in itself, I think Beyonce could have gave me a, you know what I mean? Like there should be a little love there. Now, Maybe she doesn't know. She know. Beyonce doesn't know. Yeah, I don't think Beyonce. And they're not going to share that Yvette with her. knows. Things are really heating up now. So with Jason Lee's name popping up in connection to Kathy White, fans are starting to wonder if he might know something about her death. Now, back to that Hollywood Street Kings post from August 2010. It dishes out some serious details. Apparently last September, which would have been September 2009, Kathy, aka Corey, and Claudia were spotted at the Las Vegas Town nightclub, chilling at a table with Jay-Z and Puffy. 
And get this, Beyonce was nowhere in sight. Sounds like quite the scene, especially since they were there to catch the Mayweather versus Marquez boxing match. But wait, there's more. Hollywood Street Kings dropped another bombshell post later that same day, claiming that once the news broke about Jay-Z's alleged mistress, Kathy immediately went into social media lockdown, deleting her Twitter and Facebook accounts. Plus, it seems like Claudia had her own drama going on, ending up in the hospital after a fall in the shower. Talk about a wild night in Vegas. Even though that photo got removed from the original post, it seems like Claudia was definitely making the rounds in Vegas back in 2009. She was there for the Miss USA pageant in April, and then there's this article from May 2009 by the Las Vegas Sun that spills the tea on Claudia, Jay-Z, and Diddy partying it up in Sin City with a bunch of other celebs. I always thought 28 was a bit young to cut up a beauty pageant. It almost pushes the messaging that after 28, it's kind of like a done deal, it's over. According to the article, Jay-Z and Kansas City Chiefs Larry Johnson were living it up at a VIP table next to the DJ booth. But unfortunately, Queen Bay was MIA. However, Claudia Jordan, the deal or no deal beauty, swung by their table to say hello. Talk about being in the right place at the right time, huh? Seems like Vegas was the spot to be for these celebs, and Claudia was right in the mix of it all. But with all this partying and mingling, who knows what other secrets were floating around those Vegas night. All right, let's fast forward to September 2010. Hollywood Street King dropped yet another bombshell post about Kathy White, this time titled Jay's Mistress Kathy White Exposed. According to this post, just before Jay-Z and Kathy hit up the Sin City fight, Jay allegedly splurged on a $2,500 pair of Louis Vuitton shoes for Kathy to rock that evening. But here's where it gets interesting. Hollywood Street King claims that Jay requested Kathy to bring along a few friends to ride with them that night so they wouldn't look like a couple. Sounds like Jay was trying to keep things on the down low. And that's not all. Jay apparently took Kathy gambling at the Bellagio Casino, and he was pretty insistent on Kathy's friends hovering around them while they were at the table, just to keep up appearances. Seems like Jay was going to great lengths to keep their outings under wraps. So, if you're wondering where Queen Bay was in September 2009, turns out she was overseas on her I Am World Tour. Talk about timing. The Floyd Mayweather fight, where Jay-Z supposedly kicked it with Kathy in Vegas, happened on September 19, 2009, and on that exact day, Beyonce was busy rocking the stage in Sydney, Australia. Now, after Hollywood Street King first spilled the tea about Jay-Z's alleged affair with Kathy, it didn't really make waves until the news broke about Claudia's passing in September 2011. But by then, Beyonce was already heavily pregnant with Blue Ivy. Remember her iconic pregnancy announcement at the VMAs on August 28, 2011? That news blew up the internet, stealing headlines for weeks. So, back when a few outlets reported on Kathy White's death, it barely made a blip on most people's radars. But now, fast forward to the present day, and we've got a bombshell waiting to explode. There's this woman who's claiming she interviewed Kathy shortly before her untimely demise, and now she's out here publicly threatening to expose Jay-Z. Back in July 2017, journalist Liz Corkin tweeted, When Kanye West says Jay-Z has Miz, I believe he's talking about the people who K-Ed Kathy White. So Corkin was talking about Kanye's infamous onstage rant against Beyonce and Jay-Z. You know, the one where he accused them of using blackmail to snag awards and hinted that Jay-Z might try to silence him for speaking out. Daisy, I know you got your Please don't sit them out my head. Just call me. Talk to me like a man. So in March, Liz Corkin decided to revisit her tweet about Kanye and wrote, Note the date. Hey Jay-Z, I was the reporter who talked to your alleged mistress right before she died was M. Ed. I know everything. I know what you did. Go F yourself. Your time is coming. Maybe you and Diddy can share a prison cell together. Justice is coming. While some folks are brushing off Liz as just another conspiracy theorist, others are raising some serious eyebrows. I mean, the fact that Diddy was allegedly chilling with Jay-Z and Kathy is already sending off some major alarm bells. But wait, there's more. Fans are pointing out that Diddy has been accused by multiple industry insiders like Jaguar Wright of some shady stuff, including allegations about his ex-girlfriend Kim Porter's death, which also happened under mysterious circumstances. Do you believe Diddy has something to do with Kim Porter's death? Absolutely. Without hesitation. Absolutely. By the way, Jaguar also recently claimed that Jay-Z is even worse than Diddy. Sean Carter is worse. Uh-oh. Oh, man. He's... He's patient. 
seems like Jaguar's words are really resonating with folks. More and more people are starting to nod along in agreement, thinking maybe there's more to this story than meets the eye. One person on the internet wrote, I found Kathy's obituary online. She's buried where my family stays at in Virginia. Bossip says she was a publicist and fitness expert. The fact that her presence can't be found anywhere on social media is telling. Someone wanted her erased from existence. Another one added, I can't wait until Jay-Z gets exposed like Diddy. All these devils gotta go. Poor Kathy, so sorry that happened to you. Rip Kathy White and Kim Porter. One more person added, The story about what allegedly happened to Kathy White at the hands of the Carters honestly doesn't sound too far-fetched. I heard of her a long time ago and been side-eyeing them ever since. I pray that justice is served for her. Rip Kathy White. However, some people also believe that Beyonce may also have some grudges against Kathy. So, Beyonce's sixth album, Lemonade, and the film that goes along with it, have been getting tons of love from everyone. It's all about black womanhood, infidelity, and love. And Beyonce's never been so upfront and gutsy about these themes before. Take the track, Sorry, for example, where she straight up calls out her husband's side chick by name, saying he better call Becky with the good hair. That line got folks wondering if this Becky is even a real person, and it kicked off this huge hunt to find out who she might be. Some gossip blogs point fingers at fashion designer Rachel Roy because she posted some CUS stuff on Instagram that made it seem like she might have been fooling around with Jay-Z, but others think maybe it's Rita Ora, another artist signed with Rock Nation, or this lady Kathy White. Many people are speculating that Becky's actually fashion designer Rachel Roy and that she was the cause of the infamous elevator fight between Jay, Beyonce, Jay and Beyonce's sister Solange. Forget the hunt for Becky for a sec because there's a bigger picture here that Beyonce's pointing at with that lyric. She's not just talking about some random chick, she's tapping into something deeper. See, for black women, Becky with the good hair isn't just a name, it's a whole vibe. She's the standard of beauty that's pushed on us, making us feel like we're not enough. We see her as this epitome of perfection, and some of us even try to copy her style. Meanwhile, society holds her up as the ultimate prize, the one every guy wants on his arm. I realized how every woman walked out looking and feeling beautiful. But most importantly, I saw the joy brought my mother. Sorry. Knowing that she was a part of their transformation. So who's Becky? She's more of an idea than a person, a symbol of this messed up beauty standard that's been shoved down our throats for way too long. According to Urban Dictionary, Becky is a name often linked with whiteness, usually given to white girls. It's often used in a derogatory way to generalize about white women. The name gained fame in Sir Mix-a-Lot's hip-hop classic, Baby Got Back, where a white girl named Becky and her friend Ogle at a black woman's curvy backside. In 2009, rapper Plies made Becky even more popular with his song, Gimme That Becky, where he used the name as a code for OS. This stems from the stereotype that white women are skilled at giving head. This stereotype is based on the perception that white women have more S freedom and agency than black women thanks to their privilege. It's Becky, please raise a hand, bro. In contrast, black women have often been stereotyped as uptight, frigid, and less inclined to engage in or enjoy giving OS to men. Unfortunately, there might be some truth to this stereotype. According to Madame Noir, historical factors have shaped notions of what's considered socially and S acceptable for black women. Going all the way back to slavery, black women have had limited agency over their bodies, influencing societal views on their S. Okay, this is not about you. You have to do this for them. You have to do this for history. And it's the only way I was able to get through that song. Exactly. Beyonce's use of Becky with the good hair isn't about implying that her husband's mistress is necessarily white. Instead, it's about describing someone with features that align more closely with Eurocentric beauty standards. Good hair typically refers to hair that's long, straight, or naturally curly, which is often associated with people of African descent who have looser curls or straight hair. In many societies, there's a prevailing belief that this type of hair is more attractive compared to kinky or tightly coiled hair, which is often referred to as nappy. This perpetuates a harmful hierarchy within the black community, where those with looser curls or straight hair are seen as more beautiful, while those with kinkier hair are degraded. By using Becky with the good hair, Beyonce is shining a light on two significant struggles faced by many black women, feeling inferior because of their blackness and dealing with the damaging effects of colorism, where lighter skinned or mixed race individuals are often privileged over those with darker skin tones.
It's a powerful way of addressing these complex issues within the context of infidelity and relationships. Or was it pointed towards her beloved husband who was rumored to be involved with many women including Rihanna and Kathy White, despite being married to Bay? Seems like the path for the married couple wasn't always smooth, and Bay's sister Solange might be aware of something that led to that elevator altercation. In 2014, TMZ released a now infamous elevator security video capturing an altercation between Jay-Z and Solange Knowles during a Met Gala after-party at the Standard Hotel. In the footage, Solange can be seen appearing to physically confront Jay-Z while Beyonce stands by without intervening. The incident sparked widespread speculation about the cause of Solange's anger. In my mind, Beyonce didn't get in the middle because Solange was probably attacking him over something that he knows he was dead wrong about. <laughs> And, and therefore, sister didn't get in the middle. Controversial talk show host Wendy Williams fueled rumors that the argument was related to Jay-Z's alleged infidelity with designer Rachel Roy. On the other hand, people reported that Solange was provoked after a confrontation with Roy earlier in the night. Whatever it was, his past seems to be very troubled, and you never know whose face you're going to see behind the bars. That's it for today. See you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.